Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, December 12, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? The market continues in the melt-up operation. She's headed for a destination. The trend is your friend above the trend line. All that stuff remains true. She's in an uptrend headed somewhere. Where is that place? The first place will be for 66.10. They should, and I repeat, should be there this week. Now, this week still has a lot of data, a lot of stuff going on. First two days were up. We have the FOMC on Wednesday. Certainly, the market could play and wreak some havoc on Wednesday if she wanted to. In the spirit of a shakeout operation, a quick visit from the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew. Everybody's lulled to sleep. Everybody thinks you just buy every dip and she goes higher. So they need to do a little bit of a rug pull operation at some point sooner than later. Today was the CPI part of the alphabet soup. Tomorrow, I believe, is the PPI along with the FOMC. We've got Jerry's presser following the FOMC announcement, interest rate announcement. They're not expected to do much, but certainly the market could take anything that is said, anything that Jerry says, either on his own or in response to a question, and it can have a visit from the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew and do the trap door rug pull event. It's an awareness. We don't know that will happen, but the awareness is that it can happen. What happens if there is a little bit of a rug pull event? What are some of the numbers? Well, inside the number members and live room members will certainly have that information at their disposal and fingertips tomorrow morning. Is there anything else of note as it relates to the S&P or spiders? And the answer is, short answer is, not really. The melt-up operation continues. We've got a target area slash zone up north. First number is 466 and change. And remember, we are in a period. Let's just call it late this week for a tinfoil hat cycle pivot slash turn situation. Doesn't mean it will happen this week. It could bleed into next week. But when you look back in history and you look at the chart from this week, don't be surprised if this week marks at least an interim, even short-term high. Did anybody make money today? A, from inside the numbers. B, from the live room. Let's hear about it. Post your comments under the video. We had today what's fondly known as the morning trade. It's the same trade each and every morning, just packaged a different way. It was Turnaround Tuesday. What I'm going to do is review some of the notes. I'm going to look at the charts with you. We're going to point out a couple of important things, happen real quick for the most part. What I urge you to do is pause the video, read the notes, and go back to the chart to double check the work. We had some upside stuff. You'll see 46270. You'll see another zone, 463.67 up to 464.70. They didn't quite get to the top end of that today, but almost. Then you'll notice here, 461.50. All the way down, not that much, to 460.50, give or take. It's a dollar zone, and you'll see that depicted again as we get nearer, closer to the opening bell. More of the same here, 461.50 is an important place. So therefore, by 921, here's what we're saying. We're setting up the morning trade. 461.50 down to 460.50 is the early support for a bounce back in the other direction. They start as a scalp with potential. You can see here the giveaway at 931, already at the front end of support. 461.50 down one buck. We think better in pictures, and what you'll notice here right in the vertical, which is today's activity, is opening print today was 461.64, came right into the zone, didn't even get to the bottom of the zone, and bounced back in the other direction, went up all day long. That was the morning trade. We take a profit, we put it in our pocket, and what we're trained to do inside the number members, live room members, we're trained to make the base hit, put it in our pocket, 
We hold a trailer. It doesn't cost us anything. That's how you turn them into doubles, triples, Whopper with cheese, whatever it is. That's the way we make real money in this business by continuing to add to our account by piling up the base hits. Why? Because you never know which ones are gonna give you the rocket ride. Sometimes we get a base hit, we get stopped out on the remainder, no harm, no foul, we still have a base hit in our pocket. And sometimes they never come back, like today, to visit the area we bought and therefore we get what's called in the trading parlance a free ride. You got the point. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work because you'll start to see targets showed up. Where are they going? When they start to go, where are the next exit points? You need to know the next exit points so you can get more profit in the pocket before a meaningful pullback, which didn't happen today, but they do happen. That's why it's a process. What about stocks on the move? What's going on over there? We had three potentials on the board today, two hit their entry objectives. One did not. The one that didn't is off the board. It's a no trade. But we will take a look at the charts of JCI and Oracle. First, JCI getting its buzz cut at the opening bell. Unfortunately, this one was one of those of the manner in which we had a front running situation going on this morning. You could see what happened. They came close. The low here is 53 bucks. My number was 52.96. They gave you a rocket ride real quick. That's the trade you're looking for. When they come back down, we don't want it the second time. Why? Because first time, best time, that's another ism that we discuss in the live room and inside the numbers each and every day. The numbers work. How about Oracle getting its buzz cut at the open today? Same routine. Check out the low in this first candle, the first five-minute candle of the day, 102.05, I'm at 102.04, little front running situation, we had some traders that did front run, they got the ride, but once they come back down, again, same routine, first time, best time, we're not interested the second time around, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, but what we do is we extract or remove variable risk from the business, first time, best time is a good practice, after that, you're adding variable risk and therefore we want to take it away because our longer term results will increase over time when we remove variable risk from the trading business. The takeaway is the numbers work. The other takeaway is the manner in which from a technically perfect perspective, one penny short just doesn't cut the mustard. It's very black and white. Did they hit the number or didn't they? If somebody front ran it and you got a profit, that's fantastic, but I'm going with the numbers. Now, what's going on over in Camp IWM today? Little dipsy doodle early, finished basically flat on the day, down 19 cents, no big deal. They're headed to a destination. They're on a mission to get to 190. Doesn't mean they can't go higher over time, but at 190, they should find garden variety of chart resistance. Doesn't mean they collapse. It means waltzing right on through when they get there is likely not the scenario. Now, you got to remove the Kabuki Theater tomorrow afternoon. If the market's going on a wild ride, they'll just blow through everything. But when you take out that kind of stuff and you go with the normal, if they're grinding up there during the day, they're unlikely to grind right on through into the end of the day. They're likely to find some overhead resistance under normal garden variety conditions. So therefore, what we have here is a no change situation for Camp IWM. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Any change there? No, not really. Why not? Because they were up 20 points on the day. It's no big deal. It's like a flat day. That's a rounding error in a $15,000, $16,000 index. They're eating time off the clock above all the moving averages, had just made or completed a bearish, wedgish kind of formation, back testing the 100 period moving average, rocketing off of it. This is all bullish behavior. Doesn't mean we know exactly what's going to happen at 2.15 tomorrow afternoon, but what this is at face value, being the umpire calling balls and strikes, is today it's a bullish setup. What about the Q people got to the 399 and change number? Might as well go to 400 by tomorrow. 
This is the weekly chart. They're above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend. And where are they is very simple to understand. They're at this area. This area, I like to call them breakdown boxes. The market spent a lot of time eating off the clock, decided to break down instead of break up. So they've come back to retest an area that they broke down from. It's a breakdown box. Now, can they get through here eventually? Absolutely. Why not? There's no rule that says they can't, but it's not going to be that easy. We'll just say in simple terms, they're beating on the highs. Another viewpoint is the monthly chart. They're beating on the highs. You got a big time breakdown candle. The high is 402.28. 400 is a big fat round number. Somewhere up here, wouldn't be surprising to find overhead resistance, eat some time off the clock, pull back a little bit, back test some important stuff before making a trek higher if that's the intention of Mrs. Market. Blowing right on through is the less likely scenario. What about team financials? Any trouble here? No, this is a bullish situation. When you go over to the weekly chart, you can see what's going on. We have another pseudo breakdown box area. The market was breaking out and decided not to. Instead, it broke down in a fake out rug pull situation. They've come back to that same area. Have they come back to just run a test or come back to break higher over time? Above all the moving averages, the trend is your friend. A little bit extended on a weekly basis from home base. Not too bad, but getting a little extended. So what we know will eventually happen is they'll need to give home base a chance to catch up to price. Home base is the 20 period moving average, the red trend line down here. They want to either give it a chance to creep up to price or have price creep down to home base a little bit or a combination of the two eventually. It doesn't mean it has to start tomorrow, but it's an awareness that that will eventually begin sooner than later. What about good old Smash Mouth? What's going on here? Well, they're just on a power move. Above all the moving averages, trend is your friend. New highs, trend is your friend. Where are they going at new highs? How can you possibly figure out where they're going when they're at new highs? Well, it's not easy. There's a couple of tricks slash strategies and or tactics that I may have in my bailiwick. The next number up that I calculate is exactly to the penny 169.02. Now, they're not that far away from it. They almost got there today. 169.02 is really, really important. Above that, not too far away, but a nice little move is 172. We'll call it even. So there's your next target zone. Unlikely to waltz right on through 172 for sure. Not even sure they'll waltz right on through 169.02. Markets go up, they pull back. They go down, they bounce back up. Nothing goes in a straight line forever, but nobody ever believes that they'll pull back when they're in a melt-up operation. But guess what? They will. You go with it until she does. It's a buy-the-dip situation until it's not. Just like this morning, just like yesterday, just like any other day, you buy the dip until it's not. Some point in the near term into the future, she will turn to a sell the rip once again. But right now we're in a buy the dip. You don't want to be the other guy at the craps table standing on the don't pass line, hoping everybody craps out. You want to be with the winners until the table turns. That's where the money is. By the way, getting a lot of questions on oil slash USO. So I figured I would just bring up the chart and give you the simple number. How about 6250 is the next number of importance down if they make a new low and they continue lower. 6250 is a place, should get a bounce back in the other direction. It's a give or take. It's an important spot. A, it's a target. B, it's magnetic. And C, it's support. And D, should be a bull bear battle around 6250, give or take. USO. Write it down, put it on a sticky note. How are we doing with Bitcoin? Into the zone, rejected from the zone, doesn't mean it's going to collapse. It's above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend, but the zone was the zone. So when I give you other zones and we look at other markets, they don't all have to look like this after they get to the zone, but this is what it can look like when they do get to the zone. 
Just think in terms of what I said earlier, which is never looks like they're going to pull back while they're on a melt up situation. Nobody thought Bitcoin would come down until it got into the zone. And then what happened? Found overhead resistance and they pulled back. Case in point, that's why I just brought it up. Also getting a lot of questions on gold futures. We'll cut to the chase. There's two numbers. They're 30 bucks apart. Either one can bounce the tape. 1980, 1950. Splitting the difference is right in the midst of those moving averages. So somewhere in there is a zone 1980 to 1950. There's your zone. Can't say they'll bounce at the first and I can't say they'll get to the second. But that zone represents two numbers that can bounce the tape either way. Write them down. Put them on a sticky. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.